moment just so that we can hear each other's voices. And also, if you have access to the document, if you would like to print it out. Hi, Muka. Here we go. Huh. Okay. So I'm going to begin recording this. Um, I've got a bird, a huge seagull trying to come in the window. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Hi, my dear. Hello, Alicia. Oh, lovely. Lovely to see you all. God. <laughs> Great. So, um, what I'm going to invite you to do, if you haven't already done it, is um, print out the, hi Gabriella, is print out the um, iOS document if you would like it. So, it's on the link that um, Monica posted. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to have it, but if you want to reference it yourself, then you can have it. So I've um, prepared a document for you um, that I'm going to share um, through our Zoom call. And I'm just going to outline the activities and then give you time to explore in your own way, your own creative way, how you want to deepen into the practice of the labyrinth. And then the invitation at the end of our hour and a half, we've got until one o'clock, is to come back together and just share some reflections. My aim, my intention is to just take no more than 15 minutes going through the activities and then allowing, oh yeah, it's Judith. Wait for Judith to join us. Welcome Judith. Hi. I was just outlining uh, our, our process for this next hour and a half. So just to repeat, I invite you to print out the Heart Labyrinth um, iOS in the ARC process. And then I'm going to share, um, share that activity with you. Then you'll have time to go and practice or experience and body however you wish to. And then we'll come back together um, for a reflection. Okay, so I think it's probably best to, um, I'm going to mute you all. If you do want to speak, then um, just let me know. Is that okay? Or you can, you can mute yourselves. Okay. I'll mute you at the end. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to begin by um, sharing this document. And I just put this together just to help me orientate to sharing um, the work with the labyrinth. So, um, those of you who were at the Heart Project will recognise this was our um, central kind of ritual opening, which honoured um, ourselves coming together from around Europe and um, this lovely map that Monica um, produced of all the different companies that are working together. And, you know, at this time when we were devising the Heart Project, um, Politically, there was more energy to split countries than there was to bring countries together. And you probably know within the UK, uh, we've voted, had a Brexit vote to, to step out of Europe. So this project feels incredibly potent in terms of um, healing relationships and in terms of coming together to collaborate. And this is also one of the main features in developing resilience is how we come together and how we work together in relationship to support each other and in this relationship it's a creative relationship so the heart labyrinth or um, traditionally um, you could also work with a spiral what we have here is a picture of a classical um, 
that it's a four circuit spiral or labyrinth that was created by a lady called Di Williams, who's a referent who I worked with for many years in offering the labyrinth work and creativity. And this picture was taken out at a beach that's very close to where I live in Scotland. So a labyrinth or spiral pattern is an ancient archetypal pattern found all over the world in rock art, cave paintings, and land sculptures dating back over 4,000 years. The labyrinth was used, was used symbolically as a walking meditation for contemplative practice or spiritual pilgrimage. They were also danced in celebration to mark the seasons or used in ceremony and ritual as a tool for personal and collective transformation. They are a form of environmental art that supports community building based on a sacred geometric pattern that has been practiced by peoples and all faiths and beliefs around the world. And here is a beautiful picture of the, the sharp labyrinth on sand. And I've got some other pictures of how um, this was created and then uh, it came and then it went. The sea took it. It was created as an offering of art and an offering of beauty to nature, but also to the nature of ourselves. And I often think of when, when it is that we create something like this, that it is an offering. Um, it, it is like us bowing to, um, to the art and to, to ancient practices that have far more wisdom in them than we know. And so how, how do we, in this practice, kind of surrender to the process and that surrendering will give us information, it will feed us. So why I chose to, to share with you this activity for the IOS one in terms of the Heartland project is that it can be done solo, it can be done in groups. It's a contemplative practice and as such I, I imagine that in terms of the balance of the different organizations involved, um, the art process is inviting contemplation. It's inviting a kind of inner journey, either through, as I mentioned before, somatics, through that embodied sense. And so we're using the map of the labyrinth as a way in to see what's there, to notice in the moment, as Susanna was um, talking about in our introduction, What's present for you when we bring ourselves to this question of resilience or not? Um, that might not be what's around for you. So just to be present with, with really what's alive for you in this moment. And you can ask the question of resilience later. It might come up then. So what you need, and I've, um, I've taken out the flip chart and the pen because that's possibly what you might need if you were facilitating this with a group. And instead of my flip chart and pen, I've created this little document for you. So I invite you to have some paper, some crayons available. Just we're going to go over how we draw the path ourselves. And then um, we're going to, I'm going to just kind of send you on your way. And how you create your path, the materials that you need for that will be what you discover and what you choose. So I've put here materials to delineate your path, natural objects or a collection of artifacts for the creation of the spiral or the labyrinth. If you don't have space to actually create a labyrinth on the ground that you walk around, the option is to draw the labyrinth. And um, I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna stop my screen share for a moment because I'd like to show you something. I'd like to show you this. This is a, um, the, the labyrinth from the Chartres Cathedral. And um, these date back over 4,000 years. You can, oh, I've got more people. Sorry, I'm, I'm seeing that people are connecting into our call. 
So the fin finger labyrinths, um, you can find um, in ancient stone carvings and they're um, on walls. They're, they're, there are some pictures of the finger carvings on walls. And as you would enter a, a sacred site, you would go up to the stone carving on the wall and you can do this with eyes open or eyes closed. I don't know if you can see this here, but the entrance is right here. And so you run your finger along the path. Now this is a complex path. We won't be doing this path um, in our work. We're going to do a simple path. But you can see it takes us right to the center. And then it draws us out. So what you can do is in your draw, you could create a drawing of a labyrinth and then use the pathway with your finger imagining in an embodied way that this is where you're traveling. And there's something very interesting about the map of the labyrinth and scientists don't really know um, what it means, but um, for me, it, it works with the brain, with the right and left hemisphere of the brain. And in terms of um, balancing and bringing together both what we could call the masculine and, and feminine elements, or even the, the balancing within the parasympathetic and sympathetic aspect of the nervous system. And we want a balanced nervous system for resilience building. I'm going to go back to my uh, screen share. So I was showing you the finger labyrinth because that's an option. If you didn't want to build one to actually walk in, you could create a beautiful drawing and then imagine yourself traveling around that, either with a finger or you could use your body if you're a movement orientated person. I'm seeing several of you here. Um, you, you could take your body on that imaginary journey by just looking at the image. So there's, there's lots and lots of different options and I just encourage you to be creative. And if the design itself doesn't feel nourishing for you, um, another tradition that people use is the spiral. So creating a simple spiral that you walk in or you travel in and you travel out of. One thing that's very um, important to, I should really be, actually pinning my video here <laughs> because I'm recording this. Um, one thing that's important about a labyrinth to realize is that um, it's not a maze. You don't get lost in a labyrinth. A labyrinth is a very clear path. You can, um, you can find yourself somewhere else on the labyrinth and you don't realize why you're there or how you got there. But that's an import, that would be an important reflection in your personal journey. Oh, I'm somewhere new. I hadn't anticipated this. And if we use Sonia's reference of seeing things from different perspectives, somehow I've got here. Where am I now? Making that choice to go back to the beginning or just starting where you are with that sense of actually I don't know where I am on my path right now. And whatever comes up in the labyrinth is, is a reflection. And it's a gift and, and just take that in as you please. So I'm going to come back to the screen share. If anyone has any questions along the way, um, well, if you, I'll finish the screen share and then we'll, we can come to questions. Um, Okay, so um, I was explaining what you need at the moment, paper crayons for us to go through the drawing of the labyrinth and then any materials and that's up to you how you choose to manifest your labyrinth in the time that we have. It may be that you, um, you know, you start it now and you decide to, to, to come back to this at a later moment. If you're working outside in nature, and you're on land that isn't yours, um, we always ask that you leave no trace. So after you've created a labyrinth, you walk it and then you um, replace the natural objects so, so that the nature um, can be nature. 
So I ask you, you know, what you need to consider, what space uh, or materials uh, that you have available and the leave no trace. When you're creating your labyrinth, I always think it's good to think about why you're creating this labyrinth. What's your intention? And your intention in the creation of it actually supports the building of it. It, if you like, energizes uh, what, what you're creating. And in Chinese medicine, they say where your mind goes, your chi goes, your energy goes. So when you bring intention into whatever you're creating, whether it's a drawing or whether it's in the landscape, um, I always think of it as a dedication. It's an offering. Is it an offering to healing, to letting go, to someone? Is it an offering towards finding more energy for yourself? You choose where you want to um, put your intention and that will inform the creativity that then comes forwards. In terms of traditionally walking a labyrinth, um, it could be walked or danced. And you saw a picture earlier on in the presentation of Sophia and Andy actually moving through the labyrinth together. And there is also a beautiful circle dance, which I'm going to teach right at the end of the event, which was tr traditionally walk or traditionally danced around a labyrinth. And it's called the pilgrim's dance. So people would travel and they would um, meet in communities and they would do this dance together as they moved around this kind of universal pattern that crosses boundaries, crosses borders, crosses languages. You find labyrinths in every culture and the same design. So traditionally, you could walk a path as you enter towards the center the reflective question could be, what do I need to release? A letting go. And it might not be that you, you may not know anything. You may just go into the path with, with no knowing. And then in the center, you would spend time, spend time to be with yourself, to be open to both releasing and a little bit like with the out breath, before you breathe in, there's a pause. So you can think of the central place as being a place of pause. And in that pausing, there's a rebalancing, but there's also the possibility of an opening to receive. And then the outward path is being open to receive. On all levels, physically, emotionally, mentally, and we say spiritually, um, be open and just let the path, let the process be what it is and notice what comes back to you. And again, I'm, I'm also with this image of the sea and the wave comes in and then it goes out again. So it's a very natural process. How to draw. So here I've got a little map of how we draw the labyrinth traditionally. So if you've all got a pen and paper there, I'm just going to lead you through this little map of uh, creating a labyrinth. And I know we've got this amazing Romanian team with us and Iringo who um, took this pattern in the heart project and um, reinvented it into a beautiful heart shape. So I'm gonna show that picture of Iringo's drawing at the end. And, in the little film you saw earlier on, the heart-shaped labyrinth was um, pictured and we made that out of grass that was cut from the area um, so that we could create a labyrinth. So um, very ecological practice, all to do with recycling, no harm to the environment. So the first thing you want to do on your piece of paper is draw a cross and I suggest that you um, have your cross slightly lower down on your page so not in the middle of the page can you all see this okay just give me a thumbs up yeah good thank you I can't see you maybe I could change my little thing here so that I can see more of you 
Okay, so draw, as I have done here, a simple cross, equal sided. And then the second thing to do is in each corner, if you were imagining that you were going to create a square, in each corner put a dot. That's the second point. We've got a square. I couldn't do this, I was trying to do it on my computer, but I, I don't know how to put the dots in, so I, I, I uh, made some photographs for you. So you have your cross and you have your four points at each corner. Then what I've done in a different color, just, just to help you um, organize this, is from the top, the vertical axis of your cross, you make your first arc shape line to the first point. So you go from the top of the cross, arc shape line to the first point on your right hand side if you were going around clockwise. Then you make your second line. And so what you do is you go to the left. So then you would go from the top of the cross, you go to the point on the left. And then you go, so I'm going to come down to this image here. So I've gone to the point on the left. I'm going to come all the way around and I'm going to join the line, the horizontal line. The end of the horizontal line. And again, you make a, a, an equal arc shape around. Then you're still traveling anti-clockwise as you're beginning. So then from the point, you go to the line and you draw another circuit. So here I am, all the way around to the following points. And then lastly, in our small labyrinths, the last free area you have, if you're still traveling anti-clockwise, is the lower point on the left. So here I am here, the lower point on the left, and I go all the way around to the line. And that way, I've connected all the lines and all the points. So here you have your basic labyrinth. And if I just take my, my cursor through the labyrinth, this is where you would enter the labyrinth, your, your personal labyrinth. So you'd enter in this space. And then you walk around. So we start by walking clockwise. It's a clockwise direction all the way around. And then we're going anti-clockwise around. Then we go clockwise and then we come into our center. So I just follow the path um, so you won't get lost at all and then unless you step over a path and then it's not that you're lost you just don't quite know where you are or what direction you're traveling in and that will be revealed if you continue to walk. So you spend some time in the center and then you come out. So your outward movement would be anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise, and then out. Now it's always recommended that you take a moment to just pause before stepping through. This is stepping through a threshold, stepping into another environment. There's something else that's there for you. And just to be open to what that might be. And then taking your time, moving, pausing, breathing with your own embodied awareness, taking in your internal environment and your external environment because you are walking through circles. And so at any moment, you may feel called to pause and just take in what's around you and your view will change as you travel along the path. Some people choose to also work as they travel the path on different levels, especially if they're creative movers. They might choose sometimes to roll, to crawl, to walk, to 
the choice is yours. I'm just giving you lots of creative ideas how you how you want to go through this. So at any time you can pause. Uh, it's always recommended to pause in the middle, but follow what you need to do. An important note: if you're if you're creating this as a group and you're working you're walking this path with a group of people because any of you now can take this activity and share it with others. When, if you're walking this path with others, just bear in mind that everybody has their own rhythm when they're walking a path. And it's important that everyone has the free choice to follow that rhythm. So if somebody starts to walk the path and they're quite slow, but your speed is faster, then all you do, just like with a car, is you just overtake, you just come onto another channel and then you come back in again. It's quite disturbing for someone who's going slow to feel somebody behind them trying to push them to go a bit faster. As I'm sure you'll have felt that if you're in a queue somewhere or um, it's very important just to respect and just go around. It doesn't matter. You can step over a path and then step back onto it. And here I've got a picture of the lovely labyrinth that uh, Iringo drew out. It's still based on the same pattern, but instead of going vertically and horizontally, she took um, the lines on the, the diagonal uh, to, to do her, her heart labyrinth. Okay, so um, that's, that's the instruction for you. Um, so what, what I'm going to suggest is that you take, it's up to you, the next 15 to 30 minutes to create your path, decorate it in any way you like. When we were in Hungary, we actually decorated it with um, some beautiful elemental, what I call shrines or offerings that were placed around the outside. So when people were walking, they could also connect to these different collaborative nature sculptures that had been created. We don't have time for that here, but that was what we offered before. So 15 to 30 minutes to create your path with your intention, solo or collective. 15 to 20 minutes to walk it. That's up to you. If you feel like you want to go through this fast, you can repeat the walking of it. It may be that you dance it once in two minutes. You come out and then you go back in again, take more time. That's, that's your choice, how you, how, you, how you decide to work with your path. And then the option is, and I'll be here for this, um, I'll open the, well, I'll have the Zoom call open all the time, so if anyone has any questions, you can ask me. But the invitation is to come back at about 20 to 1 and, um, or quarter to 1, to share any reflections. It's not uh, a given. If you, if you feel like you want more time to do your walking labyrinth, totally up to you. And you can share your reflections later on. I think there's a Facebook room for this. Reflective questions. How do you feel now? What was the experience of the labyrinth? And how does your um, experience in your mind facilitate resilience building? But I can put these questions if you don't want to come back together, I can put them in the Facebook room. Okay, just before we go, are there any questions? And then the last thing I'll do is I'm going to share a poem to um, orientate you. So that's lovely, Judith. Let me... Um, uh, I'm already unmuted. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. Lovely. Okay. Um... Is it always the same kind of labyrinth we are using? Um, well, I've chosen to share with you a very simple labyrinth. There are mm. much more complicated ones, like the one that was on the sand, or this uh, labyrinth. These are yes. more complicated ones, but the one that I'm sharing with you is called the classical labyrinth. So okay. it's, it's one of the oldest forms um, that you find all the way from China to South America, all mm. over the world, you, you can find that pattern. 
Okay, so uh, if we want to repeat this exercise for us, yeah. uh, we can also create our own. There's no specific order we always have to follow in order to create it. Well, um, the pattern that I've offered you is, is um, a route, it gives you a route. So by following that pattern, and as I said, um, Iringo changed it from the vertical onto the horizontal, and sort of added a, an mm. augmentation, if you like, to create something else. So the other option is the spiral. You can create your own design, but you want to have a pathway where you don't get lost. Mm. And okay. to just bear in mind that this is an ancient, um, eight, you know, 4,000 years old, yeah. and it's come through time. So there's something in it. Uh, to be explored yeah but be creative yeah. too yeah okay follow your heart <laughs> thank you very much it's fantastic any other question uh, it didn't uh, it wasn't clear to me if we are going to come back afterwards after we do the labyrinth yes that's an option some of you might want to spend more time uh with your labyrinth i'm offering you some reflective time come back together here between you know 20 like 22 one okay quarter to okay. one and then we can share our reflections together okay i'd like that but you know it's also there's also an element of following what you need to do okay. and, and and you can post your reflections later but those of you who want to i'll be here and i'm very happy to hear from you and it'd be lovely to connect anyway okay any other questions for those of you who were later, who came a bit later, I just shared that you don't have to actually create a labyrinth in the space. It could be that you draw one and you imagine yourself going through it. So, so uh, you know, for me, I can't create one in this space. It's uh, not my space, it's my mother's. And so I will be drawing a labyrinth and then I'll be imagining myself going through that. So um, somehow there'll be a way. It's inviting your creativity. All right, any last questions? Okay, so I'm just going to read this beautiful poem um, by John O'Donoghue, and I read a lot of his poetry uh, in the art project, and I felt this was a, a beautiful sequencing, a poetic sequencing of words to help us come into this practice of the labyrinth um, with a, a kind of vibrational presence. And it is, the poem is called Four Presents. Awaken to the mystery of being here and enter the quiet immensity of your own presence. Have joy and peace in the temple of your senses. Receive encouragement when new frontiers beckon. Respond to the call of your gift and the courage to follow its path. Let the flame of anger free you from all falsity. May warmth of heart keep your presence aflame. May anxiety never linger about you. May your outer dignity mirror an inner dignity of soul. Take time to celebrate the quiet miracles that seek no attention. Be consoled in the secret symmetry of your soul. May you experience each day, each step, as a sacred gift woven around the heart of wonder. John O'Donoghue. Thank you, everybody. So uh, I will stay here, um, but I invite you to um, go on your journey and uh, come back to the screen at about 20 to one or later, whenever is right for you because of um, our time. <laughs>